By the way, hashtag nation, I hope you're having a hell of a week. The Bills have not, even though we made an episode that we butchered, F.A. Odaba, Obada, Odaba, Obada. Odaba. Odaba. Um, Obada. (laughs) The Bills have not, because we have come to the conclusion on this station, on this channel, on this YouTube affiliate, that he is going to be playing more inside. He'll be more effective inside. Mm -hmm. So the Bills didn't technically address their edge position right yep still looking you got any guys that may be sleepers for the buffalo bills coming up in the oh draft? mario do i have a guy cue the you? spin out Hashtag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. So those of you who have followed our Twitter handle will know that I was aggressively (laughs) tweeting about Washington's pro day. And let me just complain quickly. There's no scouting combine this year. So every college is doing a pro day and only the colleges that people really care about, like Ohio state, Alabama, um, the colleges with the really big prospects. Those are the only pro days you're even seeing. And honestly, you're only getting to see the one or two players that they want to show you. Right. So, um, it's a really weird year because normally the way and I'm just going to, this is the way that we normally scout, right? Or at least I do. I go backwards. So I take a look at the scouting combine, right? And I take a look at the players that you expect to perform well and the players that you expect the players that surprise you as outliers, right? The players that surprise you as outliers with either how poorly they performed or, you know, how good they performed in a certain category that you kind of didn't think yeah. you go back and watch the senior bowl, right? See if they're in the senior bowl. And then you look at the outliers there and you say, okay, well, where are, you know, who played great, who is a disappointment? And then you kind of watch those guys. And then you just keep going backwards and keep climbing the ladder with no scouting combine. You can't find anything on Washington's pro day, unless it's a reporter who is on the sideline recording it on their cell phone, right? This is, this is the way this is. Go ahead, go ahead and try and find Kansas's pro day. I challenge you. You will not find it. (laughs) But the all NFL teams have access to it, but yes. w- well, we don't, right? You can't get that access. You can't, you, nobody can get it right now. So I was aggressively tweeting Washington's pro day because if there's a college out there who's going to have everything Buffalo probably is going to look for, it's Washington this year. They've got two really nice corners who are going to be available. And they've got one defensive end who's an absolute monster. And that's who I want to talk about is Joe Tryon. Absolute freak. No. Opted out of 2020. That's what I was just going to say. I was like, yep. did, didn't he didn't play this year, did no, he? No, he did not play in 2020. In the four games that they had. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. It's When you take a look at his 2019, you go, I see why you didn't play 2020. Right? Like, that's a business decision. You're only going to play four yeah. games. Like, it's a business decision. You're not going to. You know, his stock was already high enough. Why bother playing 2020? I mean, a guy that doesn't have a, have a lot of mileage on him, as no. far as that goes, he had uh, nine sacks mm-hmm. in 2019. Yep. Um, 6'5", 262. Mm-hmm. The interesting part about him and, and the things that I've heard about him, Paul, his biggest strength is his bull rush. Yep. His big, You know what his biggest weakness is? Hmm. Hand usage. Well, stop me if you've heard this before. <laughs> no, but here's my point. I, you can teach that. No, but you can, that's teachable. Here's my point. I want you to help the nation de- decipher this. What's this guy's wingspan? Oh, it's massive. It's like uh, eighty-two and three quarters inches, I think. Okay. Eighty-two and a quarter inch. Those of you that's... doing the, the quick maths, this guy's six foot five. He's got a wingspan to, uh, of a guy that's six foot eight. Mm-hmm. Okay, 
The time it takes for it to go to your brain to your hands, if your arms are that long, it takes a while. <laughs> <laughs> My point is this. I, I you know, I you know, Paul, we were talking about this guy. We were going over some of the statistics, and I'm looking over some of the uh pro day results of this guy and, and and some of the things that are that he's he reminds me eerily, eerily of Javon Curse. Yeah. You look yep. at and if you guys want to go in the Wayback Machine and go look at Javon Curse's, <laughs> true, he was drafted in 1999. Mm-hmm. But if you want to look at Javon Curse's combine stats versus Tryon's, mm-hmm. it's eerily similar. And here's the here's the amazing thing about it. This is how much the NFL has evolved, Paul. Mm-hmm. Javon Curse was dubbed the freak mm-hmm. in 1999. Was he drafted number one overall? Uh, I don't think so, but he was up there. He was I up don't there. think he was number one. I'll check that out. But Tryon is projected to be a third rounder. How much has mm-hmm. the NFL changed in that respect? Oh, I know. Crazy, right? It's insane. Absolutely crazy. Yeah, absolutely crazy. So it, I think it gets to a point, though, where, you know, a Tryon, I, th- I think, is turning into that new level of defender that Buffalo's kind of often avoided, but I think he's a nice compromise. Right. So you have let me let me just call out a guy just as a specific example in this draft class. Mm-hmm. So there's a kid by the name of Gregory Rossino or Rossio Rossio uh, okay. from Miami. OK, the Miami U. I hate the Hurricanes. I will not ever call them the U. The U. They are the no. U, though. Right. So this guy, six, six, two sixty five. Right. Mm. He is a redshirt sophomore. So real life junior, you know how Buffalo loves that stuff. They love those right? young guys, man. They love those young guys. Uh, this guy's expected to be a first round pick. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's but six five two six six two sixty. Similar frame. Yeah. Right. But this is the type of player that, like, Buffalo has a tendency to want to get guys that are a little bit, you no, know, that are a little bit heavier. Yeah. Um, at that defensive end position to set the edge. Yes. Right. But I think you're starting to see a change where those defensive ends are getting taller and slimmer. And why are they getting taller and slimmer, Mario? Because you need to get to the quarterback faster. And you can bat down passes. And right? when the, you're that big. It's because the tackles are getting taller and slender. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's right. That's, that's right. There's, that's no why reason to have, there's no reason to have these big, gigantic defensive ends anymore well, unless you're running a 3-4. That's why having a guy that is biggest strength as a bull rush is a bonus because that's not what mm-hmm. they're – I mean – these tackles are conditioned now. How many spread offenses are in college right now mm-hmm. where these guys are just – they're flying back off the line to try to protect. They don't really face bull rushing right. too much anymore. Right. Uh, they usually got all these speed guys that try to work with their hands. you got a guy who's like a throwback now in trying well, on. And not only that, Mar, but think of like what's the one thing that we complain about Jerry Hughes doing, right? Using going too wide. Ar- right, exactly. What aren't you going to have to worry about? With Joe Tryon going too wide. That's even though right. he put up a four even though he put up a four six forty at his pro day. Four six? Four six. I'm out of here. Four six four. Well no no no. We're not done. We're not done. So we talked about his wingspan being six eight, right? Yes. What is when you talk about the bench press and guys that have the guys whose arms are that long, you just talked about, you know, um you just talked about uh, you know, hand position as an issue for him. Yes. Right? Yes. The bench press is typically an area where guys with really long arms struggle. Like, can you just explain why that is? <laughs> I mean, as some, as someone are, who would know a lot about that. Are you, well, as a point of reference, I am six foot five and I have a six seven wingspan, so right. I know what this guy has to deal with on a daily basis. But I'm nowhere <laughs> near as strong as him. I know. Well, but I want to. You have to push the bar, bar I, close to I, three feet. Yeah. Okay. My, wing, go, my wingspan's six three, Mar. I know. So I get that's, it. Yeah, I know you get it. Well, um, I mean, you have more muscle in your thigh than I have in <laughs> my entire upper body. From a concept of your arms being too long and you being too weak, I understand. I mean, when you see these guards at the combine mm-hmm. that throw up thirty five reps, right? Their arms are thirty four inches long. There's and a their reason chest they're not playing twice tackle. as wide. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason they're not playing tackle because exactly. their arms are under 36 inches. But when that's, you have a wingspan why. that's that big and he's an athletic frame, he's not a big guy. He's an athletic build. 
mm-hmm. your chest isn't as big as like a guard, like like a Quentin mm-hmm. Spain. I mean, that guy's a fridge. Yep. So the point being is that to, in order to try to bench and try to get that off of you, that is tough. I mean, because halfway through the rep, it's all triceps after mm-hmm. that. I mean, it's so right. tough. So I understand the struggle that this guy has. Going on that, were, were you going to ask me like what was his bench? Yeah, what do you think his bench would have been? Oh right? God, we talked at about- his size, six five, two sixty, ran a four six in the forty. Like, what what's a fair bench for somebody at his wingspan? I would say seventeen. Okay, seventeen, maybe that's 15? a that's a. That's a seventeen's a big number. Well, in I, my I'm I'm actually doing it off of mine. I did twelve the other day. Oh God! I did twelve. Oh, God. I did twelve. I did twelve okay. the other day. And I'm a forty-one okay. year old, never was. So <laughs> he is a he's a young buck that's going into the NFL. So I would say fifteen to seventeen. I think I think fifteen to seventeen is a fair number for somebody uh, with his makeup. Yeah, he did twenty-two. Excuse me. I know. What? <laughs> 22 he did 22 with those well, tree trunk arms <laughs> and when you say bull rush is his strength then you're like okay <laughs> so does okay. that does that enhance or take away his leg strength because if you're able to put 22 on the bench right is he relying too much on his upper body strength to, well to i think do that's where rush? i think that's where that is right so you oh, take okay. a look at his broad his broad was like nine eight which is not impressive for somebody his size and weight. Okay. Um, All right. You know, so you are sacrificing a little bit there. Um, yes. His three cone was seven ish, um, which I I think is, I think that's solid. Uh, short shuttle was in the f- low fours. Again, that's fine. Um, but for somebody at his size, we haven't really seen Buffalo try and get somebody at his size, his length. Um, because that's the new generation of pass rusher. You want him thin, and you want him lanky. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, and Joe Tryon is is he 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 could be a dangerous edge guy. And if we're talking about a third, fourth round pick, well, the Bills don't have a fourth. Oh, they might have a fourth when they trade Devin Singletary. If we're talking a third or oh! fourth. That you, one felt good. If you want to look over Paul's left shoulder, <laughs> the the link, the card for that episode is right there. That one felt good. Um, <laughs> if you want to talk it. about. Uh, that new generation of pass rusher, Tryon is it. And if you want to know whether the Bills are are evolving their defense, you know, like, I think he's a good watermark because the Bills have historically avoided those those pass rush specialists, those edge guys. Yeah. And, and, he, and Tryon's not really a defensive end, right? But, but he's pretty much a defensive end. Let me ask you this, Paul. Two questions. Yeah. Well, the second question hinges on the first. Mm-hmm. Bills draft Tryon in the third round. Does that move the needle yep. for you? On their defense? Yes. 100%. Okay. Now that it moves the needle, who is the sacrificial lamb? Like, who do you lose? Does this make Addison expendable? I think that's kind of the direction that you go. Okay. Right? right. I think Because at that point, you're already in June. You'll get some money back post-June 1st by the time you know whether Tryon's, you know, going to work out or not. You know like, what? I think, I, think you're, I think you're on the other side of June, oh. and that makes letting Mario Edison go a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, I just I – just, you want to talk about moving the needle. I just thought of a four-man front. Mm-hmm. Tryon. Mm-hmm. Obata. Star, yep. Oliver, that's a big pass. Right there. <laughs> that is, terrifying. but that's a package. But yes. on a third, on on a third and long package, you want to roll that. Have fun. Go ahead. Third good long. Luck. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> I, I, Tryon is one of those guys who I think is under the radar, and Washington offers you so much right now. And yes. if you're really in on adding a defensive end at a value spot, right? So we're not talking first round defensive ends. We talked about first round defensive ends a lot. You get outside of ten, you might as well wait till sixty, right? Like there's just yeah, no yeah, yeah. value there. But once you start talking about third round defensive it's a ends, scheme fit. It's a, it's now scheme it's fit. different. Yeah. Now it's now we're talking. Now it's not apples to apples. Now we're talking something different. But Let's not forget that the Bills have an inside track on Tryon. If they're really in on him, they can do a lot of work without letting anybody know that they're in on him. They don't send somebody to the pro day. They don't, they don't 
they don't use a visit on them. They don't, they don't interview them. They don't do any of that, right? Let's say they don't do any of that and they draft them. What's the connection between Joe Tryon and the Buffalo Bills without them having to do a single thing to ever tip their hat that they're interested in? Who went to Washington? Oh, you know the answer to this one. You know it. Is this one of your faves? It is one of my faves. It's not Dane Jackson. Uh, nope. Trey, um, mm-hmm. Trey yeah. Adams? Trey Adams was the left was tackle he the in Washington. So he, he's left they, tackle when Washington was there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They've when met. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they know each other quite so a bit. So this is a Hassan Reddick, um, Deion Dawkins yeah. scenario. Absolutely. And right. for those it's, of you that don't know, do you want to, do you want to explain it or do you want me to explain it? No, go ahead. You know, go ahead. Um, in, in the year that the Buffalo Bills drafted Deion Dawkins, they were really high on Hassan Reddick. People thought they were going to take a linebacker. They ended up having a Hassan Reddick as a visitor. Um, they, they, they used a the visitor. They, yeah, were, they, were they, the pro, were they did all stuff. Visually, yeah, they were they, very visually in on Reddick. Yeah, they didn't do one thing. To my recollection, Paul, they didn't do one thing with Dawkins. I don't However, think so. Dawkins and Reddick were in an off season altercation, not with each other, but they both got in trouble together. Mm-hmm. So these two guys were friends. So that being said, you think when they visited Reddick, they were talking about maybe, hey, what's the toughest offensive lineman that you have on your team? What's the guy who's a leader? And they probably ask all certain types of questions. That's what Paul and I are referencing when we say Hassan Reddick and Deion Dawkins. And they end up drafting Deion Dawkins. And then you come to Trey Adams, who I'm sure they went together, they went up against each other in practice quite a bit. Well, seeing so, as though, well, let's just look at the numbers real quick. Seeing as though in 2018 and 2019, Joe Tryon had 700 outside tackle stances in uh, snap alignment. Yes. In 2018 and 2019, I'm pretty confident that's where he lined up in practice. <laughs> Like I'm just willing to bet that's probably where I'm he just was. going off of uh, yeah. yeah, but yeah, that's they could just talk to him. They could just talk to Adam. And say, listen, um, what do you know about this Tryon guy? What's his locker room you know level mm-hmm. like? Uh, right. We don't want to do this, this, and this. So, but they're definitely going in on the scouting of just trying to rely on what Trey Adams says and right. what their scouts have said in the pro. I think it's interesting. I think for the profile of I mean, he seems to fit the profile of what's missing on this defense. Yeah. What is missing? Yep. You need that animal, but what do you think is the real reason he's projected at a third, not a first, Paul? So, I mean, you look at Tryon's film, and this is the way scouting works, right? A lot of times they go to the big games. They want to see you against the big competition. Yes. And they want to look at the games where you had a great game against maybe even lesser competition. Tryon doesn't really have any of those breakout games where you look at it and say, wow, he took over this football game. None of those really exist, but you're kind Mm. of just going off of 2019 film because he only played 240 ish snaps in 2018 and he played 600 plus in 2019. So you got one year of film. So again, slow me down. If you've heard this before, this is sounding a lot like Aaron Maven, right? Where there was just one year of production. Difference is we're talking third round pick, not first round pick. Yes. Right. Like, yeah. I think if Aaron Maven was a third round pick, nobody would care. We would have nobody forgotten would. about him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, nobody, nobody would have cared. cared. He's um, Terrell Troop, except for the Rob Gronkowski thing. It would have been a Terrell <laughs> Troop situation. Everybody would have just moved on. But, uh, you know, there's no games that really took over, which is where a lot of these scouts, they love those he took over a game moments. And, and Tryon doesn't really have any of those. And that's okay because if you look at the weaknesses that he has, right, you mentioned hand usage is one. He's got really long arms. I that, tell him I'm not surprised by that. Mm-hmm. He ran a four, six 40. So he's got it off the edge, mm-hmm. right? If you're telling me that he needs to get stronger legs, not faster legs, the bills have an award-winning strength and conditioning program. I'm pretty confident that this is a type of player yeah. that you bet on yourself with. Right. You don't need him this year. You really don't. No, you don't nope. need him. Nope. nope. But this is a this is the type of player that teams take a chance on because the profile is dangerous. Like this guy has a thoroughbred profile. What do we talk and, about, Paul? Getting younger at the position. You're mm-hmm. going to lose Hughes and Addison next year. Yeah. Why not yep. put him across from Epineza? Yeah, that's <laughs> um, yep. as far as now. I know it's. People like to use the name Bama, LSU, Florida, yeah. Washington. I mean, because 
Because guys can get lost to LSU. You can get some quality talent because there's so much talent. Um, is that the same way? Is that what your your view is of Washington? I mean, it's a D1 program. I mean, we're not going to – But they have a lot of talent there. It's not an LSU, Bama, or any of those teams. But they mm-hmm. have talent there where – Mm-hmm. That's why Tryon's probably getting thrown down the board a little bit more because yeah. there's other talent around him that's shining. Right. There's. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like Washington a lot. They yeah. put out prospects every year, and they have for you know the last decade. There's always at least a couple players sprinkled in. Yeah. But let's just. I'm just going to do the math on this real quick. Since 2017, so 2017 to current, they've had uh, 20 players drafted in the NFL draft. Since 2017. So that's only three seasons. Overall or first round? Overall, overall okay. they've had a lot of players come in. They've only had one, two, three first round players, but they've had one, two, three, four, five, six. So they've had nine players out of those 20 drafted in the first or second round. Wow. That's a really big number that from a college nice. not many people really talk about. Mm-hmm. They put together a one hell of a program over there. They did. They did. But um, didn't they, and Mark, didn't they just have a coaching change, though? They did. They just got a new coach. Uh, they're, uh, I want to say his name's Peterson, stepped down. He took a very, uh, he took like a, an administrative position. Mm-hmm. But he was a hell of a recruiter. I mean, you got to yeah. see the, I mean, the talent that came out in the time that he was there. Uh, I think his name's Chris Peterson. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You start to look at the talent that came out in the time that he was there and who he was able to recruit there. I mean, kudos to him. I mean, obviously. The new coach that is there now, they, they went three and one this year. Mm-hmm. He didn't really recruit any of those guys that are sure. there right now. So right. Um, yeah, well, the, let, the let's back coach, this. Yeah. Let's back this up just a little bit. I'm going to give you some players who have come from Washington. Okay. okay. Now I know we're cherry picking this, right? But I'm yeah, going to work from yeah. recent to furthest away, just in the last few, just in the last five years. Okay, I think that's okay. probably fair to do. Right. Um, you have Miles Gaskin. Seventh who played round. with who, yep. yeah seventh round, but started for Miami this year. Yep, Vita Vea, first round pick. Ooh. Dante Pettis. Okay, Will Disley, who everybody will know because he's comparison to Jacob Hollister, who the Bills just signed. Oh, yeah, yeah, from, yeah. Ta- uh, yeah, from Seattle. Played, yeah, mm-hmm. right. John Ross. Ooh. Kevin King. Buddha Baker. <laughs> Sidney Jones. Danny Shelton. Marcus Peters. Wait, wait, wait for it. Shaq Thompson, my one of my personal favorites, Mason Foster, who I just adore. Mason Foster, wish he would have ever been a Buffalo Bill, but obviously it's never going to happen. He resigned in Washington, but um, and of course everybody's favorite, Jake Locker. Now, stop it. <laughs> Washington really low key puts out nasty NFL talent, right? Like nasty talent, and all those guys that I named are high round picks but all of them had the profile to be dangerous, but didn't necessarily have the profile at the college level to be, you know, lights out players. Like Shaq Thompson was drafted 25th overall. Danny Shelton was drafted 12th. Marcus Peters was drafted 18th. Sidney Jones was drafted 43rd. Buda Baker was drafted 36th. Paul. He was drafted 33rd. Stop it. Who was Shaq Thompson drafted by? I know. That's important. You talk about Carolina. defensive line. You talk yeah, about Danny course. Shelton, Vita Vea. They create those defensive linemen, and that's who has been recruited. Mm-hmm. And Carolina has a familiarity with going up right. there to try to grab talent. Right. At the second level, I understand. I know he's right. listed as an outside linebacker. He's an edge rusher. Knock it off. Okay? Yeah. This guy could fit as a man, guy with his hand in the dirt in a 4-3, or he could be an outside linebacker in a 3-4. He just has more right. stuff to do. Well, the problem with that, um, and this is kind of what we ran into with Ed Oliver, Right. The problem when you have a guy that could be an outside linebacker in a three, four, or could be an edge rusher in a four, three is that they could fit every team in the NFL. Right. So they're on every team's draft board. So they have a tendency to go a little earlier because they could just go anywhere. I mean, you know, you look like a play. We'll just use, um, we'll use Levi Wallace as an example, right? Levi Wallace was clearly his own corner, right? Like coming out of college, he was clearly his own corner. So you could take off half the NFL teams being interested in Levi mm, Wallace yeah. because, you know, a lot of a lot of col- a lot of professional teams, they want aggressive man corners because they think they could teach them zone. 
right? Buffalo is the opposite. They want decent zone corners because they think they could probably teach him how to play man. I don't know though, Paul, I, I, for me, I think it's a fair representation. It's, Mark. A, it's I mean, fa- maybe I'm wrong. It's fair. But my point is this. I think because of the raw nature of this kid, it probably cancels out the fact that he can play anywhere because yeah. teams are going to be hesitant to pull the trigger on a raw prospect like this, even though get, this is this is the type of prospect that the Bills covet. You know, you have all the raw materials. We don't have to teach you anything physically. Mm-hmm. We have to teach you the mental part of the game. Mm-hmm. We don't have to teach you anything physically. They've proven that in the past. That's what they have done. Does Josh Allen and Tremaine Edmonds ring a bell for anybody? You know, mm-hmm. raw physical freaks. Right. That's what this. But I think the fact that if you're a GM and you're going to tie your name to a first or second round pick on Tryon, that's tough to do because he could turn into an Aaron Maven. That is well, the tough part because he's so raw. I think yeah. he's so raw that that cancels out that he fits everywhere. I, well, in my personal opinion, I think it does. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. In the world of how these decisions are made, a lot of teams are really old school, and, and we hear the old adage all the time: you scout the player, not the helmet, right? Yes. But reputation matters. The yes. last time Washington had a defensive end drafted, drafted. Last time Washington had a defensive end drafted was in 2010. Wow. Right. So you want to talk about their reputation at the position? There's not one. Yes. Yep. There's not one. It's not like they which, churn out, you know what I mean? Exactly. Which makes Tryon probably <laughs> a little bit more likely to fall because, yeah, we just, yeah, we named some great players there, right? But how many of them were linebackers? Two. Exactly. One was Mason Foster, who's an inside. The other one's Shaq Thompson, uh, who's an outside linebacker. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, like, that's really where the line stops. They're they're mostly known for secondary guys, right? Not, yeah. That's really what they're known as, you know, is like a, a, they generate really nice secondary players for you. And again, they've got two of them in this draft that could very well fit Buffalo. And you might see Buffalo in on one of them, right? But if they're in on that secondary guy, they're asking questions about Joe Tryon because you just can't ignore the profile. It's at a college that typically doesn't generate a lot of um, useful players at that position from a draft profile perspective. And you're going to get value. And I think if you're Buffalo, you're looking for value at this position right now. You want to get a guy who's an athletic freak, and you hope he can just figure it out. And you're only, if you're going to put a third third round pick on him, so be it. But remember, you don't have a fourth round pick to back it up. So whatever you do it in the third round, that's a big pick. You can't waste that pick. You can't draft. And I'm just going to say it. Ooh. All are going to get mad at me. You can't draft another Zach Moss. And I say that because you already had Devin Singletary, right? And you drafted Zach Moss. You doubled down on that position. You're not going to have the opportunity to have that luxury in the third round this year with no fourth round pick. You don't have the luxury. Two things, Paul. Number one, you're talking about doubling down, which means you're assuming that F.A. is your edge rusher. And he's not. He's going to play inside. So if you're assuming that F.A. is your edge rusher, and then you draft Joe Tryon, well, then you're off, you're off that thought process. You're like, okay, you're doubling down at that position. You already have that position. Second part is this. They have two fifths. What has Bean always done? Bundle mm-hmm. those two and come up and get a fourth. Right. So if you end up getting Tryon in the third, you could double down two picks, come back up into the fourth. I mean, he's a, mm-hmm. that's not saying it's a guarantee, but I'm saying he's done that. That He mm-hmm. has done that yeah. before. If there was a guy they really wanted in the fourth, but I think that they have – they have um, filled their roster with so much different types of talent to back up their draft picks that they've already signed all their insurance policies that will not cost them anything if they cut them. Right. You want to cut Adams? Fine. You want to cut Lee? Fine. You want to cut this guy? Fine. They're all they're all there for you to cut. O- o- yep. o- Obata? You want to cut him? Go ahead. It's not going to cost you anything. No. <laughs> you know? So. Yeah. Um, obviously getting all those insurance policies prior to the draft gives you more flexibility to do so. Now those two fourth round picks, they don't need to, they don't need both those fourth round picks because you've already backed up the position. Um, fifth round free agency, two fifth, I'm sorry, two fifth round picks. You don't need to, cause you already backed up the position in free agency. Yeah. The bills have set themselves up to do whatever they want in this draft. And is this the draft where we see them pull the trigger on players that, maybe didn't have the college production that you always look for. And they have the, you know, they have the profile that they're looking for. The bills bet on themselves so much 
they and, and that, it pays they off, can coach Paul. up anybody. They, they've done a good job. We, we're critical of it sometimes. They we do things that just don't make a ton of sense. We have to be. Know? But, man, they see, they know what they're doing. I mean, Paul, I mean, the track record speaks for itself. I mean, I know. a it 41-year-old has-been quarterback from college, Division three. A former lead singer of Into Your Own, we have to give them a hard time <laughs> because yeah, our we reputation are the precedes analysts. us. Yeah. yeah, our reputation precedes the us. The professionalism of this channel is too much <laughs> for me to handle. We got microphones now. We do. <laughs> Jeez. <Some> minus. <laughs>